My name is Gordon Goldsboro of the Manitoba Historical Society. And I'm Morgana Malian, a local historian and researcher. Together, we're teaming up to learn more about the rich history of this province. And explore heritage sites that are definitely off the beaten path. This is Hidden Manitoba. In this episode, we are visiting Air School. So I'm going to be talking about the Air One Room Schoolhouse in Mequowin, Manitoba, which is a small community in the Lansdowne Glenella Rural, Rural Municipality. Um, classes had been organized in that area since about 1879, and then in 1883, a one-room log schoolhouse was built. The $500 log structure became the 150th school to be established within the province of Manitoba. As infrastructure developed, buildings, like the original log school, were often replaced by brick or concrete block structures, indicative of the 20th century. Uh, in this book on the historical atlas of Manitoba, there is a map that shows all of the schools in Manitoba, and it highlights whether or not they were a Catholic school or a Protestant school. So we're going to go in and look and see what the air school was classified as. So here is the map. And if we look closely, the school in Mequon, it was listed as a Protestant school, which is interesting because in 1890, we can start discussing the Manitoba schools question. When the original log school outgrew its practicality as an educational facility, a concrete floor was laid and it was converted to a stable. The concrete brick structure, which currently stands on the site, was built immediately next door for a cost of approximately $2,000. Quite often when these small rural communities were popping up in Manitoba, they would have sort of one central building, first of all. So the original log school in um, Mequon, that was sort of the political, religious, educational center of the community before they had a church. So they would be having church services in that school every second Sunday. That's where people would go to discuss the municipality, um, politics and who would be getting voted in and sort of as time went on and we see that log school being closed and the cement block school which is standing there today open that's when the church is starting to pop up in the cemetery and it's becoming much more recognizable as a community rather than just one or two buildings. We're in the municipality of Glenella Lansdowne and we're just coming up to the site of the former air school. Not air as in what we breathe, but A-Y-R. Um, it's a one-room schoolhouse and it's really quite interesting. It's really unique and uh, it's really worth seeing. This building was built in 1908. Uh, we know that because there's a record of it being constructed that was recorded by the Provincial Department of Education. Um, it was right smack in the middle of the period when these concrete blocks were being used. From about 1905 to about 1915, that was the golden age of concrete blocks. They would probably either make these blocks here on site or somewhere nearby. As long as they had the raw materials they needed, they needed the supply of gravel, which they had in abundance here, they needed a supply of sand, which likewise they had a lot of. They needed a few bags of cement to hold it all together and water and they were good to go. Okay, let's just have a look at the classroom. Oh wow. Well, I guess as I kind of expected, the, uh, the roof is in bad condition. You can see that the uh, the uh, boards of the floor have started to heave, probably because of the water that's come in here. Many of the schools, of course, when they were first built, did not have electricity. This school wouldn't have had electricity when it was first built. And there was no electricity in this area. So probably these lights would have been installed quite a bit later. Uh, and as a result, they would always have large windows on at least one side of the, of the classroom to provide natural sunlight. Um, this side, of course, they had the blackboard, so they couldn't have windows there. So I guess the decision was to put them on the, uh, what it would be the east wall, so that they'd at least get morning sun coming in those windows. 
a lot of these schools of this age would have had an outhouse outside. And of course, what it meant is that in the depths of winter, uh, you would have to go running outside, do your business as fast as possible, and then running back in. You know, it was not a pleasant undertaking at all. Um, but some of the schools, more progressive ones, and then of course more recently, they would put the bathrooms in the basement because of course it was heated. And so it was a much more pleasant experience to go to the bathroom. So this would have been the main sort of heating plant for the school. You know, people would have uh, opened the door here, shoveled in some coal, closed it up. As the coal burned, the hot air would go up this shaft, up into the, into the classroom. Uh, on the top of this shaft, there would have been probably some kind of cast decorative sort of uh, uh, covering and the hot air would have come blasting up through there. It would have been probably very hot right next to that, uh, that, that uh, shaft. But then in addition to that, there were these other smaller shafts that carried heat along the, uh, along the joists of the floor. And then there probably would have been registers at other places in the classroom too, so that it wouldn't be just one big source of heat. They would have sort of had other sources of heat coming as well. But we sure see a lot of structural deterioration. You know, the floor we saw up upstairs was uh, badly sagging, and we can see here why. The, uh, the end of the beam is rotted away, and it's literally collapsed down, uh, and it won't be long before this whole thing comes down. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to walk over there, because I have a feeling that that's pretty, uh, pretty shaky over there. This was sort of the center of the small community of Mechowin. Uh, we had the school in the background, we had the church over there, and in between the school and the church was the cemetery. Of course, the school is no longer in use, the church is gone, but the cemetery still seems to be in use. Uh, its grass is mowed, uh, the graves themselves seem to be well tended, there's nice flowers, and as we look around, we can see dates that are fairly recent. That's interesting because uh, this area of Manitoba was established. The, the first farms in this area were probably in the 1870s. And it wouldn't be surprising to find graves here from back in the 1870s, but there's also graves here from the 2000s. So it's clearly uh, a, still an active area. There's probably some of the older people from this region are, are still being buried here after they pass away. We have here a community that at one time thrived. They had a church, they had a school, now I'm afraid that all that's left is a very deteriorated old school building, a cemetery, and memories.